Hello everyone, it's Haley, and this is part two of my conversation with Dr. Jess Clemens. We had to split it up into two different videos because it just was flowing so amazingly and I did not want to stop the conversation. I am not the same person I was when I was 15, when I was 18, when I was 19, 20, 20, 21, 22, or 23. I'm 24 now. I wonder if you could talk about why people love holding you to a different time in your life and don't give you the benefit of the doubt that you have grown and you have matured and you have moved on. I think one of the reasons why people do what you're saying around holding people to a time in their life has to do with the way that social media has given all of this experience of access. And I think with that access, people almost want to see people who are successful or have the appearance of success fail. I think a part of it is social media and the algorithm. And then I think it's this fantasy that people have when they are seeing others who are successful, this fantasy of they're um, impenetrable, they won't feel the pain. So before where they maybe would be at home and sort of getting to talk and smack or say whatever it is they want to say, now they get to take it to social media and then they get the behavior reinforced if let's say something comes out about someone and then they get canceled. I think it just starts to reinforce that this is the type of behavior that you should have yeah. and this is what behavior gets supported on social media. Yeah, you brought up cancel culture. I definitely understand people having to deal with their actions and repercussions, but what I've never understood about cancel culture is almost like bullying people into doing what you want and then they apologize, they face it, and then they're like, well, you're still canceled anyways. It's tricky because there's people that have been canceled where they did really, really heinous wrong things to people. But when there's people that have made genuine human mistakes in the spotlight that they get essentially just berated for, sometimes it feels like they're just trying to like ruin someone's life. When you share that, it almost makes me think about sort of the mentality that happens with large groups. I'm sure you may have heard the term like mob mentality. Yeah and just how one person starts to think and behave a certain way and it just sort of spreads amongst the group. I think sometimes what we're seeing is, we're seeing that, we're seeing people holding others to a level of accountability. Like, let's be real, they're probably not even able to hold themselves to that level of accountability. I think people need to really let young people sort of grow and develop. How else will you learn if you are making a common mistake or a mistake that you could grow from if you're not given this space? to learn and develop and grow and adapt. I had it on a much smaller level, but even my husband had to just go through everything in front of everybody and make lots of mistakes in front of the entire world. There was nothing that he could do that would get by the media. It always made me feel really sad for him because so much of what was going on was what anybody his age would be doing, except it was on this much bigger scale. There was so much more pressure on him to be like this perfect example to people. And I always say to him, I'm so impressed with how normal you are because I don't even know what that feels like to go through mentally, emotionally, physically. And I know that it did have an effect, a big effect on him. And I'm just grateful that he's able to be the mature, stable adult that he is now. That is so true. Many of the things that young people sort of go through, it is a part of that natural development, a little bit of the rebellion that people have. That's a part of how you become an adult. You have to go through making those mistakes, pushing back a little bit, that little bit of that rebellious period. Months ago, there was this TikTok of this girl, right? And she was a waitress in New York. And she was she was kind of rating people's level of kindness or their her interaction with them on, on a different scale. And she did one about me and she's like, you know, I didn't really have a great experience with her. I just didn't feel like she was that nice. And when I saw her video, I was so upset. There's never an excuse for being rude. I felt bad that that was her experience with me. You never know what someone's going through. I remember going through times in my life where I was so sad and so heartbroken that like engaging with people felt hard for me. I don't ever remember meeting her, but I thought about it and I regretted that. And I wish that that wasn't her experience with me. I wish I didn't act that way towards her. I'm a human and I made a mistake and I acted a way that was out of character for me. I acted a way 
that I don't want to be. I'm trying to do better every single day. I want to continue to grow as a person and I'm open to people correcting me. I just don't think that those people that try to correct me and try to tell me what I need to be and what I need to do need to be people on social media. I would absolutely agree with you. People on social media should not be who you are getting, you know, your um, criticism or feedback from by any means because of what we're already seeing. I think that we know people are not always using that with the best intentions. They're using it to go viral. They're using it in hopes that maybe someone will respond so that they can take that and run with it and create a brand. We've been talking a lot about kind of what's wrong and the things that aren't great about social media. Like for me, the biggest thing I go through is anxiety. And so I wanted to know some of your tips, tools, suggestions for trying to keep a sound mind, for trying to keep a calm spirit. Yes, absolutely. So I think, especially with social media, my tips for keeping that sound mind and, and sound spirit really begins with following the accounts that make you feel good and you know unfollowing those that that don't i think you really want to go back to being thoughtful about who is who is entering your space and even think about social media as an extension of your sort of everyday space the other thing is to pay attention to how much time you're spending on it i know a lot of apps um, are sort of reporting to like, for example, your iPhone, you can go and see how many hours are spent a day. And you gotta put that phone down and connect with people in real life. Those are the people who matter. Some people are using social media simply to try to hurt people and bring them down. And if that's the experience, take a break from it. And you can say, Dr. Jess said that, you are taking a break. Dr. Dr. Jess said that I need to stay off the gram, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you know, like people don't necessarily, you know, have to kind of delete all of their social media, but you should just be thoughtful. One of the things I know that you you shared is your engagement with therapy. And you know, people are watching this and they're like, okay, I want to get help. There are resources out there. You know, I would recommend a resource called Psychology Today if, if someone is looking for a therapist. Also looking up NAMI.org, N-A-M-I.org is a resource that people can look for if they're not quite ready for therapy, but they want that sort of support. People can also reach out to me um, on social media. I won't be their doctor, but you know, I'll be happy to sort of direct them to, to help as well. Thank you, Dr. Jess, for having this conversation. I really believe that it's gonna help a lot of people. And I thought that we were just honest and I hope people can take something from this. I know they will. I mean, look, people yeah. are people are in need and so it's important that you started this conversation. Thank you so much. So I hope you guys enjoy part two. Please like and subscribe and ring the notification bell. <laughs>